said, we deserve to see the Mueller report. Right, right. We've, we've seen it, or, or most of it. Right, right. Um, what, you know, what, what, well, I, start with the second sentence. Let me read you the second sentence. I, mean, you, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it. The Russian government interfered in the 2016 presidential election in a sweeping and systematic fashion. Right. Second sentence. Yeah, well, that is the main story. And it's a story that uh, needs to be uh, told and retold over and over again because we were the subject of a foreign adversary's attack, an attack on our election, an attack on our sovereignty, uh, an attack on our democracy. And you can try to figure out everything that did happen, and we're a long way from knowing, because we need to get the full report, the unredacted version, uh, and certainly the Congress deserves to get it. But I think it's fair to say uh, that this is not just about a reckoning with the recent past. This is about what is going on today and the threats to our next election, uh, to our defense as uh, a nation. So, Edward, I think the report is long, and it obviously takes time to wade through it, but especially for uh, this group, it's something that every American who cares about uh, holding our adversaries accountable, looking to prevent what happened from ever happening again, should take the time to go through. Uh, and I'm really of the mind that um, the Mueller report is part of the beginning. It's not the end. Uh, maybe as Churchill famously said, it's the end of the beginning. Uh, because there's still so much more that we should know and that we should act upon. And obviously that's uh, what the Congress is trying to figure out what to do right now. The other experience with impeachment, because um, I wanted to know, I think everybody would like to know whether you agree and whether the Mueller report has shifted your views at all on that. Well, I think what Nancy means, and I agree with what she means, is that it shouldn't be a preordained conclusion. It shouldn't be what you do for partisan political purposes, almost outside the framework of the Constitution. It should be something undertaken in a really serious, diligent way based on evidence, not on partisan advantage. And so what she's now putting in place, I think, addresses that. As I understand it, there will be many more public hearings uh, at which people who have a role, like they did in 1974, uh, came forward. I mean, the, the witnesses in 1974 were, and 73 and 74, were predominantly administration witnesses. They were John Dean, who happened to be White House counsel. So it's fully appropriate for this Congress to call Don McCann, who happens to be, or happened to be, White House counsel, and you go down the line. And what I think her argument is, you know, we want to show the American people we take our constitutional responsibilities seriously. And I agree with that, absolutely. So you don't put impeachment on the table as the only item on the table and say you're going to get there no matter what, which is it's what happened in 99. Instead, you say, we are going to proceed with the seriousness that this demands. And the House Judiciary Committee, if there is a sufficient, careful analysis of what's in the Mueller report and what's coming to light through congressional uh, hearings, may well start an impeachment inquiry whose responsibility is not to prejudge the outcome, but to examine the evidence as objectively as possible, and then to draw conclusions. And if at that point they believe that high crimes and misdemeanors have been committed, then I think it is the obligation of the Congress to put forward articles of impeachment. And I think Nancy understands that kind of sweep and the care that has to be taken so that it doesn't immediately look as though you've got some uh, pre-ordained outcome that you're aiming to get without doing the hard work uh, that I remember so well from my experience all those years ago. 